So thank you very much, uh, Secretariat Helen, for uh, running us through through the, the Kudo platform shortly. Well, uh, yeah. I would like to make some opening remarks. A warm, warm welcome to all of you who have joined the 31st meeting of the CITES Animals Committee. It's been quite a while that we haven't seen each other, been able to communicate, so it's about time, even though it's in a bit, a bit special setting. Um, I would in particular, of course, welcome my fellow members of the Animals Committee and their alternate uh, alternates and of course the secretariat staff with whom I have had the pleasure to prepare the meeting for a couple three four five six weeks in advance and of course the secretary general Ivan Igoigero who will address you all after my introduction all welcome I do welcome some of you in strange hours some in the middle of the night, some early in the morning or late at night. I'm very grateful that you have been able to ac accommodate these sometimes strange working hours and I'm really looking forward to an interesting and uh, lively meeting. We do have a very heavy agenda. We have only one meeting this, this whole period between COPs and a lot to look at. I will have to conduct our meeting in a very strict manner. This involves having to limit the time allocated to everyone who wants to intervene and make a statement. Members and alternates will have a maximum of five minutes per intervention, observer parties four minutes, and observer organizations three minutes. That doesn't mean you have to fulfill these minutes, it's just the maximum that, that I can give you the floor for. I will strictly adhere to these times and will have to intervene if they are not respected. I will do that not to be disrespectful to the intervening entity, but rather out of respect to all the others also wishing to contribute and to have a, a, a balanced view. As is customary in conference of the parties, if we do have broad consensus on a topic, I will close the speaker list and ask for, for anybody opposing that view. And if not, then I will propose a way forward. This will entail that not everyone wishing to speak will be able to do so. I will do the same if I see that we do not have consensus and will probably need a working group. So I will strike the working group with, without having been able to listen to everyone who can then give its views and contributions in the working group. So in order for us to get through our mandate, I ask you all to bear with me. Be patient, but also be very concise so that we can move forward in the best fashion. So this concludes my opening remarks and I would now like to give the floor to Ivan Igero, Secretary General of CITES. Ivan. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and warm greetings to all. Matthias Lorscher, Chair of the Animals Committee, members of the Animals Committee, distinguished delegates and participants, dear colleagues and friends, good day to all. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 31st meeting of the Animals Committee and the very first formal online meeting of this committee. I hope you and your families are doing very well. This is also the first and only animals committee that will take place before CITES COP19. The extensive documentation before you is evidence that the animals committee, the parties, and the extended CITES family have been progressing on the implementation of the intercessional work despite the postponement of this meeting and the challenges brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Congratulations to you all. Over the following days, you will be discussing the considerable mandates that the parties have given to the Animals Committee at COP18. It is thanks to your commitment and dedication for the conservation of wild fauna that you will consider an agenda of over 40 items so that the parties will have the best possible information and guidance for the sustainable trade and long-term conservation of CITES-listed animal species. 
Your commitment is also reflected in the number of participants for this meeting. 76 parties with 480 delegates and 91 organizations with 234 delegates registered for this meeting, which is the largest number of participants for an animals committee meeting in the history of CITES. We are making history again as we did for the standing committee meeting. I would like to warmly welcome the chair of the animals committee, Mr. Matias Lordscher, and the vice chair, Mr. Hugh Robertson, who were both confirmed in their functions through intercessional decision making by the animals committee after COP18. They both have extensive CITES knowledge and experience, and it is really an honor to have Matias as chair to guide this meeting with the support of the secretariat. We also extend our warm welcome to the new committee members. In the agenda for AC31, the Animal Committee's activities and tasks have been grouped under strategic, implementation, and species-specific matters. Amongst the strategic matters, you will discuss relationships with CBD, IPBES, and other organizations, and assessing the conservation status of Appendix 1 listed species. Concerning implementation matters, you will address a wide array of topics, including identification and traceability of sturgeons and paddlefish, the definition of the term appropriate and acceptable destinations as it applies to elephants and rhinoceros, as well as the review of significant trade and the development of guidance for making non-detriment findings. A key section of the working program for AC31 will focus on species-specific matters with agenda items on 17 different taxa ranging across marine and terrestrial species. On the agenda are West African vultures, eels, leopards, tortoises and freshwater turtles, sharks and rays, and queen conch, just to name a few, as well as items on the maintenance of the appendices. I do hope the briefings carried out have provided you the opportunity to get acquainted with the documentation, as well as with the revised recommendations contained in the addenda of relevant items. Finally, I warmly thank the donors who entrusted us with the funds for the implementation of relevant decisions, as well as the great experts behind the reports. I wish you fruitful discussions. I ask you kindly to let remain respectful and cordial with each other during these discussions. And as always, the Secretariat remains at your service to support you as we navigate this new online format. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, Matias. Thank you, uh, Secretary General. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, I've heard my sound is not very good, but I hope it is better now. Um, unless, please, uh, let, let, let me know if I have to change something. We are still living in very special times, and the pandemic, even though we do see positive signs all over the world, is not over for a considerable time yet. It has changed our ways of working, communication, and going about our daily lives. It has also caused unbelievable damage, sorrow, and loss of lives. We have also lost colleagues who have been working with us for many years. Maurice Isaacs, Isaacs from the Bahamas, Han Anton Mesniev from Russia, Dr. Chu, Hu Chu from Ejiam from Singapore, and Sultan Chirak from Hungary will be missed dearly. So before we start our deliberations, I would li like to call for a minute of silence to remember our colleagues and the many souls lost in these times. So thank you very much. So our first point on the agenda 
confirmation of the election of the chair and the vice chair. Uh, Yvonne said in her opening remarks that this has happened in an in a online manner. I would like to, to thank my colleagues from the Animals Committee for giving me and you the, the, the confidence that we can lead this committee. So thank you very much. Then agenda item two. Declaration of conflict of interest. For this agenda item, I would give the floor to the, the Secretariat. Tom, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Matthias, and welcome everybody to the, the this 31st meeting of the of the Animals Committee. Um, resolution Conf 18.2 on establishment of committees provides guidelines on conflict of interest. Conflict of interest is defined as any current financial interest which could significantly impair an individual's impartiality, objectivity or independence in carrying out his or her duties as a member of the committee. Each member and acting member shall at the beginning of each meeting of the committee declare whether they have any financial interests that he or she considers considers calls into question his or her impartiality, objectivity or independence regarding any subject on the agenda for this meeting of the Animals Committee. A conflict of interest may also be identified by any credible source and brought to the attention of the Chair of the Committee of the Animals Committee through the Secretariat. None has been brought forward to us. If a member has such a financial interest he or she may take part in discussions, but not in the decision making regarding the agenda item in question, nor can he or she chair the meeting or sub meeting for the agenda item in question. To date, the Secretary has not received any indication of conflict of interest from any members of the Animals Committee. Should any member have a financial interest as defined, I invite them to declare this now so that it may be recorded in the summary record of the meeting. And I'll just pause here to give anybody who has such a declaration to make a moment to make the declaration. Thank you, Secretary. So the floor is open. If anybody wants to declare a conflict of interest, I don't see anybody asking for the floor. So, so Indeed, Mr. Chairman, no such declarations are made. The committee will therefore note that no member declared a financial interest that he or she considers calls into question his or her impartiality, objectivity or independence regarding any subject on the agenda for the meeting. And I hope you can concur with that, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretary. So this information is noted by the committee. Thank you. So we can then move on to the next agenda item, which is, which is agenda item three, rules of procedure. You have in document AC 31 doc three, our rules of procedure as amended at the 30th meeting in July, 2018. Uh, Okay, I have I have been asked to quickly unplug my my headset and and replug it to see if it's better than just a second. Okay, now let's hope it is better. It is? Okay, I'm glad. Sometimes uh, technical problems can, can be solved pretty easily, so very good. So as I said, you have the rules of pr procedure in front of you. They remain valid for this meeting. Uh, I would also like to draw your attention to the information document AC31 that provides guidance on the application of rules of procedure of the Animals Committee in a virtual, in an online meeting. So if you have any comments or suggestions, please, you can ask for the floor now.
I don't see anybody asking for the floor, so we uh, note these rules of procedure. Next agenda item is our agenda. So we have to adopt our agenda. It is it is contained in AC 31 doc 4.1 ref 1. I don't see anybody asking for the floor. So as always, silence is an is agreement. So this agenda is adopted. And agenda item 4.2, the annotated agenda. The Secretariat has produced an annotated agenda and uh, you are invited to note that agenda. I don't see anybody for the asking for the floor, so this agenda, uh, the annotated agenda is noted by the committee. Then we can move on to adoption of the working program. This is document AC31 doc 5, and it lists uh, our working program for the coming days and weeks. So if you have any uh, comments or suggestions to make to this uh, agenda item, I would like to open the floor for members first. I don't see anybody asking for the floor, then uh, parties. I chose NGOs asking for the floor. I don't see anybody commenting, so this working program is therefore adopted and we will proceed as suggested in the program. Next document is admission of observers. The Animus Committee is invited to note the list of observer organizations that have been invited to participate in the meeting as in document AC31 doc 6. I don't see anybody asking for the floor, so this is noted. Then uh, agenda item seven, the Animals Committee strategic planning for 2019 to 2022. The document has been, uh, uh, 7.1 is resolutions and decisions directed to the Animals Committee, a list of those it has been prepared by the Secretariat in two annexes, and it lists all what has been put forward to for us to be done. So the Animals Committee will be is invited to take note of this document. Nobody is asking for the floor, so this document is therefore noted. Then the work plan. Uh, this is a document by myself and it it presents uh, it presents a list of instructions directed to the Animals Committee or that may be that may require that it be consulted or informed that can be found in the currently valid resolutions and decisions of the conference of the parties. The document also identifies a lead or co-leads among the members of the Animals Committee for each of the instructions that were agreed upon through our intersessional decision making. Uh, as, as I have pre presented at the Standing Committee 73, I will shortly uh, wrap up what, what the Animals Committee has done to fulfill this work program. At, at the instruction of the Chair, uh, the Secretary initiated a procedure for intercessional decision-making, which was published in, no in a notification to, to the parties. The committee also established six intercessional working groups and agreed their terms of reference. We will hear more in the coming days what has come out of this work. The members met twice in a virtual setting to agree on a roadmap for this work to, to be on, undertaken. The Animals Committee then agreed also that several items in of its work plan could benefit from informal discussions to prepare them for, for the meeting between members and invited experts. 
However, none of these discussion groups really materialized, so we cannot report anything here. On a review of significant trade in specimens of Appendix 2 species and review of trade in animal specimens reported as produced in captivity, discussion of ongoing cases, ongoing cases is still on its way and we will report at this meeting about the status of that work. The Animals Committee was further consulted whether the tra a transfer of live element specimens from an Appendix 2 population to an XC2 lo location as well as an objection raised by a party on a registration to breed Falco pellegrinoides and Falco peregrinus for commercial purposes. Finally, the Animals Committee provided input to assist the Secretariat in identifying priorities for additional or improved NDF guidance materials and, and for addressing apparent gaps. The nomenclature specialist of the Animals Committee has also worked on prog to progress on the nomenclatural task assigned to the Animals Committee by COP18. We will hear more this afternoon of this work. So this as a short reminder what where we are with uh, with uh, the work program and the committee is asked to note this report. I don't see anybody asking for the floor so this is noted. Concerning agenda item 7.3 prepare Preparation of the report of the Chair of the Annuals Committee for the 19th meeting of the Conference of the Parties. I intend to, to, to contact, in when the time comes, the, the leads on the various issues where there has been work happening. And we'll ask these leads to provide me an update where we are. And I will then uh, put this report together based on all that feedback and the work done. This agenda item is also for the committee to note this information. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, you would know my email. Uh, if the members know it, so if they have a question, they can still contact me directly. So this is also noted. So then we can move on to the uh, first substantive uh, agenda item which is on African lions. It's AC31 agenda item 20I8. The document AC31 uh, 28 and its addendum provide updates on work on lions that the Secretariat was instructed to undertake at COP18 and discuss the implementation of decision 18.247, which is directed to the Animals Committee. Addendum 2 contains the report of the Intercessional Working Group on African Lions that we established through intercessional decision making. Making. I would like now to invite uh, uh, Pant Pantaleon Kazoma, the representative of Africa, as co-chair of this working re group, to briefly introduce that uh, the document, the addendum two, so that we can hear from himself what what has happened in the working group. So, uh, Panta, you have the floor. So I don't see Pantaleon asking for the floor. So uh, I can briefly try to, to, to summarize what is in document then two. You have had it all only in front of you, so I can be quite short. Uh, 
So it, it, uh, a request for comments on the version of the guidelines for the conservation of lions was reviewed and adop adopted by the conference of the parties to the convention of migratory species last year and was sent out to members of the working group uh, early in March this year. Comments were expected by 25th March and of the members who responded, 20 were able to send comments. There were a range of questions that the members were asked to, to, uh, to complete, to answer to. They are found in paragraph four of the document. Due to the diversity of responses, as well as the fact that there is a distinct divide between Southern African rain states, as well as members involved in consumptive use of lions and the rest of the working group members, the working group did not manage to conclude the matter of the guidelines in its mandate within the available time. Due to the lack of consensus and the fact that a significant section of the perceived beneficiaries of the guidelines had, had no faith in them, the working group is only providing information that, that can form the basis for discussion on the best way forward. So as you see, uh, in the light of what we heard and the information in front of us, I would just suggest the following way forward. Firstly, I would like to invite the Animals Committee to take note of document AC31 DOC 28 and its addendums 1 and 2. Second, and as we heard, the working group of the Alliance on Lions was un unable to fully implement its mandate related to decision 18247 paragraph I, A concerning the review on, of guidelines on lion conservation in Africa. I would propose an in-session working group on African lions to be established. First, to agree on a process and way forward for implementing decision 18.247 paragraph A and two draft recommendations for consideration by the, by the Animals Committee later in this meeting. As you can imagine, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to, to reach a consensus on all these issues. And we also have to bear in mind that CMS, and this is a CITES CMS collaboration. And if we adopt something different than the CMS has adopted, we would have two diverging documents. So we really have to find a way, how do we keep such a document, a living document as we all want, and that it is all, always in agreement between the two, uh, the two conventions. So that would be part of the work of this working group. Third, I would propose to consider the Secretariat's suggestion that the mandate in decision 18.2.47 paragraph B be extended beyond COP19 as described in paragraph 11 of addendum 1. And finally, I would also like to propose that we request the Secretariat in consultation with the Chair of the Animals Committee to report the Animals Committee's recommendations coming out of this work on African lions to COP19 under the Secretariat's reporting obligations on the implementation of decisions 18.244 and 18.246. Now I'd I would like to open the floor for comments from members first to the proposed way forward. I see North America has asked for the floor, so Ezekiel, you have the floor. Well, something th I think you have to ask again, Ezekiel, something didn't quite work out. Perhaps, perhaps I can uh, repeat for all participants in this meeting that if you want, if you are offered the floor, you must request to take the floor. Click the button request to take the floor only then and wait. Only then will you be given the floor and have an opportunity to make your intervention. Thank you. We seem to have some 
problems connecting North American representative Our technician, are the technicians, I'm, I'm sure they are looking. So I see Europe, in the meantime, Europe has asked for, for the floor why we look at the, while we try to solve the connection problems with uh, North America. So uh, uh, now we have to floor, Europe, you have to floor Dagmar. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Matthias. I would like to say very good uh, morning, afternoon or night to all participants, which I'm really sorry not to be able to, to meet personally. Uh, giving a bit of time to Hezekiel, I just wanted to support your way forward for the Lions. We really regret a lot that uh, the working group was not able to find uh, uh, the way forward so we think the the in session working group should should uh, also look into the approaches how to co overcome this divide and to genuinely strive for for agreement so that's that's all i wanted to say thank you thank you europe dagmar thank you very much so can we can we try again to connect uh, north america Ezequiel benitez Or do I see other uh, uh, comments or suggestions from from the the members? I see uh, uh, North America, Cecilia Lohi, do you have the floor? Good morning. Good morning. Good. Thank you. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Uh, our apologies. Uh, my colleague Ezekiel is having some technical difficulties. So I will speak uh, for the North American region as alternate of the region. Um, thank you very much, Chair. The North American region applauds the work of the Animals Committee Intercessional Working Group on African Lions particularly in light of the time and coordination challenges arising as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We recognize the active and meaningful engagement of the working group members and appreciate the recommendations of the working group chairs included in the document related to this agenda item. We support the establishment of an in-session working group to prepare draft recommendations for consideration of the committee in the in particularly taking into account the issues raised in the intercessional working group that are not yet addressed in the documents including trophy hunting captive breeding and trade in lion parts we really urge parties of the central and southern african region to participate in the working group to ensure that a diversity of perspectives from lion range states is included. We acknowledge that issues related to CITES and zoonotic diseases will be discussed in a standing committee intercessional working group and believe that that would be the appropriate uh, group for those discussions. So um, as a region, we would request that the discussions on zoonotic diseases be deferred for that forum of the standing committee meeting working group that has been established. The North American region also supports extending the mandate of the session 18247 paragraph B beyond COP19 and furthermore since information resulting from the sessions 18.244 and 18.2 246 will likely be incorporated into the guidelines for the conservation of lions in Africa. We also recommend extending the mandate of the session 18.47 paragraph A to the next intercessional period. Thank you, Chair.
thank you. Uh, I'm still asking for for uh, uh, words from the members of the Animals Committee if they want to give their views on the way forward. Uh, so far, I have re received uh, support for what I suggested with one addition uh, concerning the extension of the mandate. So I would like to open the floor now to parties, observer parties who would like to take the floor. Please indicate it. By pressing the button request for the floor. I don't see any parties. I don't see any parties asking for the floor. So, uh, yes, I see Zimbabwe who has asked for, for the floor. Zimbabwe, you have the floor. Can you please give the floor to Zimbabwe operators? Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, for this opportunity. And I'd also want to appreciate all the efforts that are being made for us to be able to continue with our meeting. Uh, going back uh, to uh, our agenda, uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, we do not accept the guidelines in their current form. We believe that there was very little time uh, for us to make any meaningful submission uh, during the working group, and we want to support that we need uh, further to discuss further, and also I would want to uh, go along with the recommendations uh, by the chair that we need to make to work, to work again in the intersectional working group in Southern Africa. We want to participate and have ample time to address all the issues that have been discussed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Zimbabwe. So I take it you you support the, the way proposed forward. Uh, do I see any other uh, observer party asking for the floor? I see Uganda has asked for the floor. Uganda, you have the floor. Hello everybody, good morning, good evening. Uh, Chair Uganda supports the recommendations in document 28, but I also wanted to indicate that the committee member from Uganda, Dr. Panda, is having connection problems, and uh, I have asked that he come and uses my laptop, so if Uganda requests for the floor, you know that it is the committee member who would be wanting to speak, not Charles. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Uganda, for this helpful information. So whenever we will seek uh, uh, Panta, we will know where to find him. Uh, I have somebody, Ombeni, asking for the floor. I don't know if this is a party representative or not. So, can you please give um, Benny the floor? I would like to, to ask whether it is a party re representative. Yes. 
You need to unmute your microphone if you want to take the floor, please. All right. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. I'm speaking on behalf of the United Republic of Tanzania. Okay. Uh, Tanzania would like to uh, align itself with Zimbabwe to welcome the recommendation by the chair of the animal committee of um, uh, convening an intersectional working group to with the mandate stipulated at the document uh, 28 is the issue of lion uh, guideline for lion conservation has been discussed in some of the meetings but uh, there are a number of issues that um, lion in range state have not agreed so there is a need to have an ample time in order to thorough discuss the issues stipulated therein and also prepare the modality for the implementation of the recommendation setting the line lion conservation uh, guideline uh, as well as uh, the the lion range state um, make uh, a way in which they could generate some uh, resources for the implementation of the the lion conservation so tanzania also would like to be member of the intersection working group thank you chair thank you tanzania uh the if we do form a working group, we will do that uh, after I have closed the discussion and we will s set it up and that's what, that will be the moment when you can then uh, voice your in interest to be a member of the working group. So now I have two more uh, uh, people wanting to ask the floor. First, of course, CMS. Uh, Clara, you have the floor. CMS. Can somebody give CMS the floor, please? Thank you very much, Chair, and hello to all. CMS Secretariat welcomes the efforts of the working group on the review of the guidelines for the conservation of lions in Africa and supports the extension of its mandate. As the chair has already pointed out, CMS COP also mandated the CMS Scientific Council to review the guidelines. This review will take place at the Council's upcoming online session, scheduled from 28th of June to 9th of July. We would also like to highlight at this point CMS Resolution 13.4 on the Joint CITES CMS African Carnivores Initiative, which instructs the CMS Secretariat to convene in close collaboration with the CITES Secretariat regular range state meetings to monitor the implementation of the joint program of work of the Joint African Carnivores Initiative. Based on this and in view of the potential uh, CMS, I don't hear you anymore. I think we seem to have a a glitch, technical glitch here. Uh, I think we have to wait a couple of seconds if the connection is, is put back in place. It doesn't seem so, so uh, I, I would like to ask uh, uh, CMS Secretary to maybe retry to connect. From what I heard so far, I think CMS would be in line with what the other speakers have been saying, that it would be worthwhile having that working group in session, work, working group to advance the, di the, the discussions. And I th haven't heard opposition from that side. So I have one more speaker, uh, conservation analytics. You have the floor. 
And maybe to, to, to CMS, if you could in, in indicate in your, uh, in, in the chat, whether, whether you wanted to, to, to finish your uh, statement or if it was all right, if we continue. So, um, conservation analytics and analytics, you have the floor. Well, technology fails us a bit this afternoon. This is a bit unfortunate. Uh, can you can you try to fix the problem, technical problem? Okay. In the meantime, I see that CMS secretary is back on online. So please uh, give the floor to to uh, CMS secretariat. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I hope you can hear me now again. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. So I hope I will pick up where I think um, we would also like to highlight at this point CMS resolution 13.4 on the Joint CITES CMS African Carnivores Initiative, which instructs CITES Secretariat regular range state meetings to monitor the implementation of the joint program of work of the joint um, African Carnivores Initiative. Based on this and in view of the potential back and forth of reviews by the respective scientific bodies of CITES and CMS, we would like to raise the possibility of the task of the review being delegated by both COPs to the ACI range state meetings in the future and would welcome the working group to consider this suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, CMS, for, for that input. I think that was also along the lines. I myself was also thinking that in order to avoid a force and back between CMS and CITES to have uneven or different uh, uh, documents, it would best to use such a initiative where exactly such work should be done. So it's something the working group will certainly have to con consider as a way forward. I see one last speaker that I will, will take, that's a Safari Club International, and then I will close the, the debate and we'll propose a way forward. So, Safari Club International. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we would like to align with the comments made by Zimbabwe and Tanzania. We certainly appreciate the challenges to agreeing to such an extensive document, but uh, rain state engagement in the development of the guidelines is critical, and thus far we feel has not uh, been sufficiently achieved. So we have serious concerns about the document's treatment of previous comments made by the African parties with the largest line populations, the uh, drafting process, which has not appropriately addressed these comments now for three years seems woefully ina inadequate. Therefore, we believe the working group's process and current version of the guidelines are unacceptable. Uh, in particular, the guidelines fail in several areas. First, the guidelines approach to trophy hunting as a threat to lions, rather than one of the only activities that contributes substantially to the conservation of lions and their habitat. Second, the document unnecessarily focuses on Southern Africa, where lion populations are most robust and well managed, rather than other regions where lion conservation needs are much different and better management is needed. Thirdly, the guidelines unnecessarily include management work that is already completed or best undertaken by the national wildlife authorities of the range states involved. Uh, fourth, the document lacks new information on lion harvest data, national hunting regulations, and other range state conservation work. And fifthly, the guidelines erroneously continue to support for spore counts that research has found can have mixed results compared to more accurate repeated call and survey methods. Lastly, uh, we note the secretary has secured funding for further implementation of a couple relevant decisions, uh, but more actions are not funded dating back 
the COP17, along with the ambitious program of work for the African Carnivore Initiative. We therefore encourage CITES to first prioritize funding, keep the scope of uh, this work within the mandate of the convention, and focus on producing useful tools that support range states. Um, so conclusion, Chair, we support your way forward. Uh, we look forward to working with the in-session working group on a review process for the guidelines that is inclusive of range states and respects their expertise in line management. Thank you. Thank you, Safari Cup International. I think all these aspects will be, uh, can be dis discussed in the in session group. And uh, so I conclude the debate and I would, uh, in, in that sense, uh, propose following uh, decisions by the Animals Committee. So it takes note of the document, document AC31 doc 28 and its addendums one and two. It is, establishes an in-session working group to agree on a process and way forward for implementing decision 18.247 uh, paragraph A and draft recommendations accordingly for consideration by the Animals Committee. It considers the recommendation drafted by the in-session group as appropriate and the extension of the mandate in decision 18.247 paragraph, paragraph A and B beyond uh, COP19 as outlined in paragraph 11 of the pre present document and the discussion with, with this, uh, the suggestion from North America we just had and request the secretary to convey the Animals Committee's recommendation to COP19 under the sec uh, in consultation with the chair of the Animals Committee under the secretary's reporting on the implementation of decisions 18.244 and 18.246. So that's what I propose. If I don't see anybody opposing, then we would strike the working group. The mandate, I just pointed out the mandate is uh, agree on the process and way forward for impl implementent, implementing decision 18.247 paragraph A and draft recommendations accordingly for consideration by the Animals Committee. So that's the mandate. And uh, now I would first like to ask members of the Animals Committee to indicate their interest in participating by pressing the, the, the request to floor button. So I see Europe, Asia, uh, the second Europe as well. I, I haven't asked now for, yet for everyone, just the members of the Animals Committee. Huh? So I have uh, Asia, I have Europe, I have, uh, I think that, that should, should be Panta from the Animals Committee uh, from Africa. I see the second uh, representative from Europe and I see North America. And I, I would su su suggest that Panta, Panta Leon is um, chairing this working group as he did the, the previous one. Now I would like to ask uh, observer parties to indicate their interest. I see Botswana observer organizations, please clean out the observer. I only want to see parties, observer parties only. Botswana, Zimbabwe, United States, Uganda again, Tanzania, Netherlands, UK, Ethiopia, Spain, China, Any other observer parties asking to be members of the working group? Japan? South Africa?
Any other part? Lesotho? I've seen you. I have named you Uganda. That's that's okay. Namibia. Okay. Can you please cl clean the list now? And then I would. So, so we have a, a secretary. I didn't write them down myself. So how many uh, parties and and um, uh, members did we have? Thank you, thank you, Chair. We have nineteen parties and members. And as you remember, uh, Rule Seventeen of the Rules of Procedure that you agreed to earlier in this meeting provides that. Uh, in terms of IGOs and NGOs, there should be equal or lower number mm -hmm. of, uh, of of parties that, than parties and members in in working groups like this. So there are 19 spots, so to speak. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. So now I would like to ask uh, observer uh, organizations to ask for the floor. I see it's quite rapidly filling up. We have 17 so far, so 18, so I think 19. Now I have to close the list for the moment being. Huh? So we have Conservation Force, we have CMS Secretariat, we have WCS, we have Pantera, International Association for Wild... Ooh. Well, I don't know how that continues, but I think the Secretariat will know. IUCN, WWF, Conservation Force, Safari Club International Foundation, Humane Society International, CIC, Dallas Safari Club, Born Free Foundation, I see Gabon has asked, so we have one more party. 20. We have traffic, ZSL, South Africa. No, we had South Africa already. We have already Safari Club International. Well, uh, we have three times Safari Club International. Uh, so, or Safari Club, maybe they could also talk with each other. Provide life. Center for Biological Diversity, Association of Zoos and Aquarians, Aquariums. So the count is uh, is twenty one. I think if 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 we are correct, we have twenty parties or twenty one. Se Secretary, can you please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have. 20 parties and an equal number of observers at the moment. Okay, good. That's good. Hold on. Counting again. We have 17 um, observers and NGOs. So okay. is, uh, we, we are... Okay. We are okay. safe. Very good. So uh, that would then be that working group. And um, for working groups in, in general, as soon as we know which working groups we do have, uh, out of this meeting, we will set, set up a schedule that you will be able to see online and you will see when and where and how the various working groups will be coming together to do their work. So that will be uh, announced, I think, on, on Friday when we have the, the joint se sessions and it will also be published on, on, on the website. Good, that closes agenda item 28. So we can move to the next one, which is a report of the specialist of on zoological nomenclature. Uh, and I would like to give the floor here to our uh, valued colleague from the Animals Committee nomenclature specialist. You have the floor to introduce the document.
Thank you, Mr. Chair, and greetings to everyone. The original report on nomenclatural matters was published in May last year as document AC31, document 37, with multiple annexes. A working group was formed late last year and started its deliberations in February of 2021. The mandate of the working group and the results of its deliberations are presented in the addendum document AC31.37 add with one annex of its own. To summarize the current state of activities, with regard to decision 17.312 RevCop18 on nomenclature of birds, the working group approached consensus to recommend adoption of the HBW slash BirdLife International Illustrated Checklist of Birds of the World as the core nomenclatural standard for birds as a group. This choice means that a large number of individual species cases still need further consideration with regard to retention or replacement of currently adopted supplementary nomenclatural references so that names that are important to parties are retained. For example, the distinction between the K-parrot Poyocephalus robustus, distinct from brown neck parrot Poyocephalus fuscicollis, and the status of the Timnae parrot as a subspecies of the grey parrot Psittacus irritacus. At this time, the matter is not yet ready for submission to the 19th meeting of the Conference of Parties. A further deliberation in an in-session working group and possibly after COP19 remains advisable. Concerning decision 18.310 on online databases, the working group agreed that as much preparation and evaluation work has been done by the Secretariat as is possible, and that the next step should be for the nomenclature specialist to work with the Secretariat to put the process in action effectively to field test it. The preferred test case would be to work with the WORMS database to prepare an updated checklist of CITES listed corals. This would also address decision 18.312 on nomenclature and identification of corals. Resolution Conf 12.11 on standard nomenclature tasks the nomenclature specialists with keeping the nomenclature used by CITES current with scientific developments and complete with regard to newly listed species and species groups. The inclusion of additional species of reptiles, amphibians, sharks and rays, and spiders in the appendices at COP19 required the preparation of additional nomenclatural standard references and these drafts were made available for evaluation in annexes 1 to 4 respectively to document AC31 doc 37. The working group reviewed these documents and recommended their adoption by the parties at the 19th meeting. The working group also evaluated a very substantial list of nomenclatural changes affecting CITES listed species that have appeared in the general scientific literature. The working group recommended some of these proposed changes for adoption for use in CITES. The working group recommended rejection of some other proposed changes. And the working group could not come to a consensus on some proposed changes, with some recommending adoption while other members recommended rejection. And finally, the working group members had no particular preference concerning the remaining possible changes. These evaluations were provided in the annex to the addendum document AC31 Doc 7 37 add and are highlighted in green for re recommended adoptions, reddish for recommended rejections, and yellow for cases that will need further deliberation. As is evident from the large number of possible updates on which the working group either did not reach consensus or received no comment, substantial further work will be needed. Finally, consideration was given to a possible nomenclature standard reference to update the higher taxonomic categories of reptiles, specifically lizards and snakes, but no appropriate single reference could be identified to date. In conclusion, while significant progress was made since COP18 concerning nomenclatural matters, not all the assigned and ongoing tasks could be completed. Moreover, it is unlikely that the remaining tasks 
can be completed at this 31st meeting of the Animals Committee. It may therefore be advisable to establish a small in-session working group to take stock of completed and outstanding tasks and draft decisions to continue the work after the 19th meeting of the Conference of the Parties. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Nomenclature Specialist. Short and concise as ever. So uh, I think it is quite clear what is before us. And we have uh, the suggestion to have a working group that looks at the issues raised by the nomenclature specialist. I would like to open the floor for comments from the members of the Animals Committee. I see North America. Uh, Cecilia, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and I apologize, Chair, this is an old request for the floor. I put a comment on the, um, on the chat. It was on the previous item, and we were just seeking clarification that our request to exclude the discussion of zoonotic diseases in the terms of reference was, uh, was taken so that we know what mandate we're going into the working group. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, North America. I, I think that that was was taken uh, as a as an in, input that this would not be at this discussion point in the discussion on lines. Uh, I think the mandate is 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 quite clear what this working group is tasked to be doing, and that does not include the discussion on 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 pandemics. So, uh, in my view, the, the mandate is 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 pretty clear there that this is not does not form a part of the, this discussion. So that has been taken on board. I then see Europe has asked for the floor on nomenclature. Uh, Europe, Dagmar, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Matthias. Uh, let me start with one general comment. Uh, this session of the Animals Committee is about to discuss and agree a large number of nomenclature changes, which is of course necessary to keep scientists up to date with the latest developments. At the same time, uh, the growing number of, of changes in scientific names which are used on CITES permits can cause certain difficulties in situations when it is necessary to find out which names were valid at certain point in time, such as when there are investigations on illegal trade, during court cases, etc. We, th we therefore appreciate that uh, the website Species Plus provides more detailed information on nomenclature changes, in particular uh, on, uh, on the COP session which adopted a particular nomenclature change. Uh, this information is provided since COP17, so in the future it will be very useful to add exact dates on which uh, a nomenclature change has entered into force under CITES to facilitate uh, further uh, processing of uh, older, older permits where necessary. It would also be useful to add this information retrospectively for nomenclature changes which occurred uh, at COP16 or earlier. Now with respect to the amphibian and reptile species that have been newly listed in scientists' appendices at COP18, we generally support the adoption of time-fixed extract of the reptile database and amphibian species of the world database as nomenclature references for these two groups. However, several taxonomic changes occurred in the two genera Goniorosaurus and Tilototriton after publication of the extract uh, checklist provided in Annex 1 and 2. Uh, we have sent our detailed comments to Peter Paul, the nomenclature specialist, and there may be the working group, so I will not read them all, just uh, will, will say that uh, considering these recent changes, it would be 
uh, useful to consider adoption of a more recent time fixed extract of the two uh, databases uh, than the one provided in annexes one and two, if possible, depending on the procedures and timelines, timelines under CITES. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Europe, for, for, for these su suggestions. I think they are valuable co contributions to an in-session working group that that we will most likely form. I so far haven't had any uh, other, uh, other views on that matter. So I see no more members. So I would like to open the floor for observer parties. United States, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for this opportunity to speak on the issue of zoological nomenclature. The United States is in agreement with the need to keep nomenclature of the CITES appendices up to date and in accordance with accepted scientific standards. In this regard, we appreciate the work of the Zoological Nomenclature Working Group and support the recommendation of the specialist in zoological nomenclature to adopt Handbook of Birds of the World, uh, bird, uh, bird, bird Life. We are concerned, however, that substantive nomenclature changes to the CITES appendices represent a technical challenge to the management authorities. The ongoing transition of management authority permit systems from paper-based to electronic presents unique challenges to entering those changes. We recommend that the nomenclature working group alert the standing committee to this issue and suggest that the standing committee direct the electronic systems and information technology working group to survey management authorities on the current methods of recording nomenclature changes in their electronic CITES permit systems with the twin goals of providing an accurate picture of how nomenclature changes are currently implemented and developing technical guidance to support management authorities in this process. As a related matter, the implementation of these changes in the nomenclature present challenges as they are introduced to the public, inspection and enforcement personnel and other stakeholders. When large numbers of proposed changes are involved, complete and correct implementation of the changes can be delayed due to numerous factors. Incomplete or incorrect implementation of new nomenclature changes by some parties, especially when made manually, will limit the effectiveness of all of CITES for all. In closing, we would like to pose two questions for those offering nomenclature proposals with significant numbers of proposed changes for consideration. First, are all the proposed nomenclature changes critical to maintain or enhance the effectiveness of CITES? And second, can the implementation of these proposed nomenclature changes be managed to mitigate any negative impact on CITES authorities that are not adequately staffed or well equipped. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, United States. I think this, this the suggestion that the e-permitting or the, the working group on electronic permits uh, look into the issue of, of updating species lists on an electronic basis, I think that that is a good suggestion that that, that we can uh, put forward from the committee to, to the standing committee to suggest that additional work maybe for, for future decisions concerning e-permitting. And your questions, I don't quite know how we want to put that to parties, but, but I think that is, if, 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 if you could dis discuss this within the working group as well to see how can we, uh, 
address these concerns for 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 other other parties that that might be a way to to get that into the the loop so i uh, with this i would like to open the floor for the uk uk you have the floor Thank you, Chair, um, and just like to thank the uh, the Animals Committee nomenclature specialist and the working group for the um, impressive amount of work that they've done and for their advice and guidance. Um, regarding the standard reference for birds, we could support the adoption of the illustrated checklist of birds of the world um, with a number of supplementary standard references for specific bird species or species groups which are, um, are still to be agreed. Whilst we recognise that this will be more disruptive to CITES existing use of names under the Howard and Moore checklist, we consider the widespread adoption of the um, of the the checklist of birds of the world um, in other MEAs and the IUCN red list and also the extensive accessible supporting documentation goes strongly in its favour. Um, we could support the proposal just made by the European representative to include dates against nomenclature changes in the Species Plus database. This seems like a good idea and also the US's uh, suggestion on technical guidance. Um, regarding Mandates B and C, um, we support the proposed way forward using corals as a test case and engaging with the Secretariat of the World Register of Marine Species to prepare a date fixed extract of the appropriate coral section of worms. As for a time specific date, we feel as much time as possible should be allowed before the conference of parties, so suggest setting a date sooner rather than later, perhaps immediately following um, AC31. With regards Mandate D, we support the proposed standard references referred to in Annexes 1, 2, 3 and 4 of document AC31.37. Um, and finally, concerning Mandate E, the UK was part of the intercessional working group um, and our views on the list of proposed updates to nomen nomenclature of species listed in the appendices are documented um, in the Annex to Doc 37 addendum. Um, and we would be very willing to participate in an in-session working group if it's formed to try and resolve some of the areas where members had differing views. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, UK. I see Israel has asked for the floor. So Israel, you have the floor. Hi. Hello, everybody. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank very, very much the nomenclature specialist, Peter Paul, who does a wonderful job and maybe not always appreciated em enough by, by uh, all of us how important and how complex it is. And I'm sure the working group is giving him a lot of good help. Um, it's very important uh, to have uh, competent uh, nomenclature specialists and also to have updated nomenclature. And we would support also what the United States said about the importance of helping the parties to make these changes uh, and, and giving them the technical expertise to make these changes as the changes occur. It's certainly uh, not a trivial issue to have to go into complex lists of species that are in um, one's uh, electronic system and make the changes as they occur. Um, we would like to address one specific issue, which a um, uh, question to the nomenclature specialist, without getting into details of so many proposed changes, but perhaps it might be appropriate at the Animals Committee meeting to address the issue of the elephant, which um, there is a lot of scientific evidence for separate species for African elephant and forest elephant, uh, where this issue is not addressed. Perhaps it was addressed by the um, working group, but it doesn't appear in the report, and we would like to uh, get an oral answer from the uh, nomenclature specialist on that particular issue, since it has very big implications on uh, CITES trade issues and permits. Thank you. 
Thank you, Israel. So we have a question that is directed directly to the nomenclature spe specialist, uh, Peter Paul. Do you want to to react? Yes, I see. Uh, can you please give the floor to the nomenclature specialist? Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Israel, for this very pertinent question. Um, we are aware of the changes in acceptance of nomenclature of African elephants as two separate species, uh, Loxodonta africana and Loxodonta cyclotis. Um, it is important to remember that previously, when discussing standard nomenclature updates for mammals, the parties explicitly rejected the recognition of Loxodonta cyclotis at that time. However, Given the widespread adoption in scientific and civil society of the African forest elephant as a separate species, I certainly think it extremely appropriate to be considering this in careful detail uh, after COP19. I would certainly plan to refer to this matter in my report to COP19. Because of the timing issues, it has not been brought up and not been possible to consider it in the working group, but rest assured it will be done in the future. Thank you. Thank you, nomenclature spe specialist. I think that answered the question that it is not for forgotten and will be will have to be this discussed at the next uh, conference of the parties. So, with this, uh, do I see now? I have no more observer parties asking for the floor. Now, open the floor for observer organizations. Nobody asking for the floor, so with this I would would close uh, the the debate, and I would suggest uh, that we form a, a working group in session working group with the uh, following mandate: prepare draft decisions to replace decisions seventeen three point. One ref cop eighteen on nomenclature of birds and decisions eighteen three oh nine to eighteen three twelve. B. Review the cases highlighted in yellow in com column K or H in the annex to the addendum to document AC thirty one doc thirty seven and assign them to either the green, which means recommended for adoption at COP nineteen or red, which means not recommended for adoption at COP19 categories. C, consider options to update the higher taxonomy of lizards and snakes. And D, report on its deliberations to the Annals Committee. Here I do have a short question for, for the Secretary. Is, is, do we have here the possibility for the working group to also uh, ask the Annals Committee to to uh, send uh, uh, a, a comment to the standing committee for uh, in including this nomenclature question into the work of the e-permitting working group? Um, yes, Mr. Chair, that is of course something this working group can consider. And they can co also consider, for example, drafting uh, relevant decisions to respond to the need that the US uh, advised to look into actually a technical capacity to match actually nomenclature changes with e-permitting permitting and, and technical capacities in parties. Um, that, is, that is appropriate for this working group and they could uh, add this, this element to, to, the element, to the terms of reference. Okay, so, so we will add that to, to the terms of reference for, for the group to consider. Very good. So with with this addition, then the terms of re reference I've read out. So now I'm seeking uh, uh, interest in joining that in session working group first from from the members of the animals committee. I think Peter Paul will will be on its own from from the animals committee. No. Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Peter Paul. That's good. Uh, I also see the Oceania rep representative who has asked uh, to be part. So Hugh Robertson will also be part of the working group. 
then I would ask observer parties to voice their interest in joining. It's the United States, the UK, Mexico, China, Australia, Japan, Switzerland, Germany. Okay. So the the count is 10. Okay. So we have 10 uh, members or parties. Oh, I see Bangladesh has also asked to be part. So Bangladesh will be added. So we have 11 uh, party representatives and members. So I would like now to clean the screen, uh, the, the screen and I would ask uh, observer organizations if who wants to join. I see Humane Society International, World Parrot Trust, German Society of Herpetology, UNEP WCMC, Parrot Breeders Association of South Africa. Okay, that's five, huh? yeah, yeah, very good. So we have a good balance there. So that concludes our work on nomenclature, on the report of the specialists on nomenclature. And I would then move on to the next agenda item, which is agenda item 38, listing of pangolins in the appendices. Again, I would like to give the floor to the AC nomenclature specialist. Peter Paul, you have the floor. Thank you again, Chair. In document AC31, Doc 38, the background to decision 18.315 on the nomenclature of pangolins in the species of the family Manidae is presented. A possible way forward was provided in the form of a draft proposal to streamline the current listing of pangolins in the appendices, which currently consists of a genus listing in Appendix 2, but all eight currently recognized species of pangolins are individually included in Appendix 1. Therefore, it appears that the Appendix 2 listing of the genus is actually an empty listing. We discussed this in the working group. And while some members of the working group were supportive of, of submitting the draft proposal to resolve the issue, others expressed concern about po potential alterations of the scope and stability of the listing, as it would affect any possible future discoveries of new pangolin species. Here, they recommended retention of the current listing of pangolins in the appendices, cumbersome as it may be, as preferable over amending the listings. The committee and observers are therefore invited to offer suggestions on the way forward. Should no recommendations be received beyond what was presented in document AC31 doc 38, its annex and its addendum, the default approach will be to report on this matter to the 19th meeting of the conference of the parties and leave the listing of pangolins in the appendices as it is at present. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, nomenclature specialist, for that in introduction. I now open the floor for comments from members on this issue. I don't see anybody asking for the floor. So if 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 we don't have any any substantive. Uh, uh, Discussion. Then the report by the stand uh, by the nomenclature specialist would suggest the retention of the status quo, like it is now. So I see uh, North America has asked for the floor and has disappeared again. Now, yes, North America. Very good. Okay. Finally, thank you very yes. much. 
Yes. Uh, so, Chair, what you're saying is to maintain the status quo and no changes in the appendixes so far by this group, because we would like to, to raise that we should be very careful when considering higher taxa for inclusion in the appendices. As, as we currently are, we have eight species from the genus Manis, but we should be careful moving to family or, or to genus or to family or even to order as, uh, as is the case. So we need to be careful on the possible complications. And the more precise the appendices, I think the, the better for implementation of our convention. Thank you very much. Thank you, North America. Anybody else asking for the floor from the members? I have the United States as an observer party. So, United States, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The United States proposes replacing the current listing of all eight individual named species of manis in Appendix 1 with the higher order listing of the order Philodota and deleting manis species from the Appendix 2 uh, through this process. We do not believe that this is the type of amendment proposal generally uh, contemplated under Resolution 12.11, RevCop 18, paragraph 2F, because it appears that the original intent of the listing would not be retained with the automatic transfer of any undiscovered species from Appendix 2 to Appendix 1. With respect to the pangolins, the United States believes this agenda item should be turned over to the publication of the appendices to be addressed after Standing Committee and specifically uh, with the issue of higher tax on after COP19. Thank you. Uh, may I ask, so are, are you suggesting that, that there should be an additional decision made or or can it already be incorporated in an existing de decision an additional decision needs to be made and who would uh, are you suggesting that the animals committee proposes such a de this decision to the to the to, standing to the standing committee yes correct okay thank you so i would give the floor now to bangladesh Bangladesh, you have the floor. Yes. Yes, our opinion is not to delisting any species uh, from current status. Uh, so, uh, pangolin is very critically endangered species in Bangladesh, uh, especially uh, in some hill forest areas of Bangladesh. We have, uh, you see, Panta uh, species, uh, and it is very threatened species in Bangladesh. So, uh, other species are Indian pangolin and Malayan pangolin, uh, but recent uh, trend uh, in within 10 years, we did not find any evidence of presence of these two species of Indian pangolin and Malayan pangolin. Uh, so, uh, uh, we have the uh, uh, Wildlife Preservation and uh, Security Act uh, 2012, and all these three species are in Schedule 1 uh, in our Act. So, our uh, opinion is to not to uh, to protect the uh, whole genus and keep the whole genus in Appendix uh, 1. Thank you very much. So, thank you. So, if, if I understood correctly, you would like to 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 make the change as as is has been proposed previously and not uh, re revert back to to the old to to the old listing manner. Or would you be comfortable in keeping the appendix like it is now? Yes, uh, okay. our, um, our opinion is keeping it like this now. Thank okay, you. very good. Thank you very much. That clarifies. I see the UK has asked for the floor. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, unlike some of the previous interventions, um, we would actually support the suggestion that's arisen from the work of the intersessional working group. All the animals committed to work with the depository government to list the entire order fully dota in Appendix 1, and at the same time to delete manis species from Appendix 2. Uh, we feel this proposal, this suggestion from the working group, uh, even though it wasn't uh, by consensus, has significant merit. It would, in our view, align with the party's original intent to include all pangolins in Appendix 1, and also ensure that any new species discovered would also be included in Appendix 1. Uh, we find it hard to believe that if the latter situation was the case, that any such species uh, would not qualify for Appendix 1, given that uh, any new species is likely to be extremely uh, rare and threatened by the same process as other species. We didn't feel the issue raised in paragraph 8 of the addendum to document 38, namely that this would be extending the scope of the original listing proposal was particularly relevant. Uh, any proposal that might be made by the depository government would be a new proposal which can perhaps supersede the scope of the former proposals. Uh, but it does seem to us, Chair, that this suggestion as a way forward uh, would allow parties to consider this at COP19 uh, and reflect and uh, in detail on any implications then. So uh, again, Chair, we would just reiterate our support for the uh, suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, UK. So your, your proposal is that the Animals Committee uh, asks the dep depository government to present a proposal to COP19 to, to list all uh, 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 species under Folidota in Appendix 1. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. I see China has asked for the floor. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I want to say good, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. We want to thank the church and the AC members to give us this opportunity to communicate in this way. China appreciates the excellent job the uh, nomenclature specialist has done in this group. Regarding the listing of pangolins, we prefer to change the status quo. The current listing uh, could result and has resulted in risks and uncertainties in the implementation of the convention and enforcement. Like what has been mentioned in paragraph 729 in the addendum document, it is not merely an issue of nomenclature. Uh, revising the draft proposal analytics to uh, AC 31 document 38 might address the existing concerns mentioned. So we are willing to participate in further discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, China. Uh, anybody, any other observer party asking for the floor? No, so um, observer organizations, please. I see WCS has asked for the floor. Very much, Chair, and uh, we will be very. I will be very brief. But first, thank you again uh, to the nomenclature specialist and the and the intersessional working group. WCS supports the uh, recommendation uh, supported by the speaker, the delegate from the United Kingdom, to include all pangolins at the order level in Appendix One to avoid the situation of some sort, if there is a recognition of a new pangolin species, it would by definition be rare and endangered or would have been discovered by now. And therefore we believe that retaining Manus in Appendix 2 instead would create enforcement concerns. And we're quite concerned about that. There's ample precedent in the appendices 
for higher taxonomic listings uh, in Appendix 1. And therefore, we would support the recommendation of the nomenclature um, uh, working group to include all manis, all pangolins, sorry, at the order level in Appendix 1 through a proposal submitted by the depository government to the next conference of the parties. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, WCS. Uh, IWMC, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to support also the position of the First of all, the specialist of nomenclature and then the, the UK delegation. And uh, because this is uh, surprising to see that uh, we have uh, still the reference to the genus in the Appendix 2 and the, all the species in Appendix, in Appendix 1. Maybe we would have supported to have a rather Manis SPP in Appendix 1 than uh, Folidota SPP, but this is a detail. And I think this is uh, creating to speak with what happened in the past because it's not exactly the first time that CITES has this kind of problem. We had it a long time ago with Araucaria species in uh, Argentina and Chile. And we had to some extent uh, the risk of problem at COP18 when there was a proposal from uh, Kenya and others uh, range chain of the African elephant, which uh, their proposal was to, and they have taken care that to request when they asked for the transfer of the population appendix two to appendix one to indicate specifically this would mean that the all genus would be in appendix one, because if but the secretariat in the presentation of its proposal, the proposal, the, the list, they just indicated the transfer of the species of the four population from Appendix 2 to Appendix 1. And if this have been, would have been accepted, this would not have prevented the pot potential acceptance of the proposal from another range state of the elephant to have its population transferred from Appendix 1 to Appendix, uh, to appendix 2. We, if the, list, the proposal was clearly indicating listing of all elephant population, all species at Africa, Loxodonta Africana in Appendix 1, and through the transfer of the four population which are, and would have been prevented the possibility to list another, to transfer another species from Appendix 1 to Appendix 2. Therefore, we really support to have a proposal to list uh, either Manis SPP in Appendix 2 or uh, Folidota is PP in Appendix 1, uh, both in Appendix 1, sorry, not in Appendix 2. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, IWMC. I, I would like to ask now International Association for Wildlife and then Humane Society, and then I will close the list. We support fully the uh, Proposal by the nomenclature specialist is supported by a whole range of other speakers. Uh, we note particularly the comment from China that it will facilitate implementation of the Appendix 1 listing, and it's inconceivable that a new species will be discovered that isn't already known being split off from an existing species genetically. So for that reason, rather than defer until after COP19, I think parties should consider the order listing in Appendix 1 and be done with it. Thank you, Mr. J. Thank you, International Association for Wildlife. Humane Society, you have the floor. Hello, hello, I'm sorry. C can you hear me, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I will again be very brief. Uh, without taking a position on the pangolin issue specifically, uh, I would point out that as a number of people have suggested, there are broader issues 
here in relation to the interpretation of uh, higher tax on listings and at scope. And I would wonder whether it would be appropriate to recommend that this these sorts of issues be looked at in general uh, so that uh, I did, uh, some decisions could be made about what these interpretations will mean um, at COP19, which would assist us going forward should issues of this sort arrive in future. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Humane Society. So, uh, I have heard broad support for for the for putting forward uh, a proposal to COP to list all pangolin species under a higher taxon in Appendix 1. I have heard a, a pose of opposition from North American region and from the United States specifically. I have now he heard also for Humane Society that um, maybe the issue of higher order listing should be considered in general, which would, would require to have a, de a decision put forward to the standing committee to con to consider that. Uh, so uh, my initial reaction is we we have two opposing views. So um, I would like to suggest that the working group on, on nomenclature looks at this issue as well and and tries to, to, to find a consensus way forward on this issue and report back to the animals committee. And we will then have to decide in two weeks time what we actually do it. I don't think it is ripe now to, to take a final decision on this matter. So I would, would like to defer that to the in session working group on nomenclature to look at this issue. I think the main, uh, proponents that have spoken they are also member of that working group so I, I I do think it would be the appropriate place to see to seek for a com compromise on that matter is that way forward agreeable to everyone I don't see any head nodding like we usually would but I see North America has asked for the floor North America you have the floor A comment to, to clarify what exactly are, are we talking about. If the original intent is to have all pangolins in Appendix 1, uh, because we have already in Appendix 1 a species level uh, way, and for Appendix 2, a genus inclusion. Now the proposal is to include a whole, the whole order, which is many levels in taxonomic categories higher and this is what we are concerned about complication or misuse on higher taxa using the appendices uh, yeah if by the end of the day what is suggesting is to include the whole genus of manis in appendix one that is maybe less um, abrupt in terms of i mean we should go and to analyze species by species if they fulfill the criteria for inclusion in the appendices. This is a principle we use in our convention. So just to consider the possibility to 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 include the whole genus manis because we don't know in the future if there is a new species if it's subject to international trade or so on. So uh, to be on the safe side, we should we should. Uh, uh, be careful by considering so higher levels in taxonomy. This is just a comment for consideration if it's going to be more work or if this topic is being considered also later in the standing committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, North America. Well, uh, I would like I'm, I think I would like to ask the nomenclature specialist who is, is much more in, into this, this discussion, who has led the discussion in the working group, whether these issues have already been considered in the working group. So I would give the floor to an AC nomenclature spe specialist. So Peter Paul, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, the very fine detailed specifics of the matter have not been discussed in the working group. Um, 
it's not so much a matter about going into the fine resolution of the eight individual species. Uh, the main concern is the concept of higher tax on listings. So I certainly see benefit in requesting the standing committee to look at this matter in general. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to discussing the specifics of the pangolin matter and whether to list it as a genus, as a family, as an order, or in its current format in Appendix 3, uh, have that conversation in the working group. Okay, thank you very much. So, so you have taken up my offer to enlarge the scope of your working group, and, and I think this, this is the best place where, where also North America can, can, can voice its, its interpretation and, and, and maybe reach a co consensus that we all can then submit to, to standing committee and the COP. So uh, I think that's the way we will go along. So thank you very much. So if I don't see anybody else asking for the floor, that's that's what we will do. So we will in, in, enlarge the mandate of the nomenclature uh, working group with that issue uh, on on higher tax uh, on on pa pangolins higher tax on listing. So yeah, uh, will will it? Secretary, do you think it will be necessary to 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 publish the mandates somewhere that everyone can can see, see them beforehand be, before we start to work? Of course, Mr. Chairman. Um, actually, um, what um, this may be the time to to explain that what we will try to do for um, for the in session work groups that uh, this committee is going to create is that. Um, these working groups, um, we will reach out to the chair of the working group, in this case, Peter Paul van Dijk. Um, we will, of course, share with him the mandate, as we heard, which the, your initial mandate, plus the elements that the United States brought in, plus the elements that you just agreed uh, with regard to pangolins. And then the chair will, uh, the chair of the working group will, will, will then reach out to all the participants in his working group. Um, and then decide how best to operate next week. All working groups are supposed to undertake their work next week from 7 to 11 June. And they are, are expected to have completed their mandates, their reports by Friday 11 June. Um, so depending on the mandate of the working group, the group may decide to conduct its work via email or via virtual, virtually using a platform so, such as Zoom or MS Teams. Um, the Secretariat will liaise with the chair of each inter, 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 intercessional working group you set up, in this case with Peter Paul, to help determine how best to organize their work. Um, once that the working group's membership and its mandate are confirmed, which we will do, and published on our website, um, we will facilitate the working group by schedule any Zoom and MS team meetings that uh, the working group has decided uh, they would like to have. Um, we will publish on our website an overall working group schedule for all the different uh, working groups, in-session work groups of the Animals Committee, but also the Plants Committee, and the joint sessions of Animals and Plants Committee may create. And we will try to minimize overlaps between working groups to avoid that actually people, individuals from different Part different countries would have to, um, um, they cannot be in, in all these work groups. We'll try to minimize overlaps. Um, and we also, um, each work group has a, will be assigned one, two, or even more site secretary staff to facilitate the work and to, um, to assist wherever and, and however we can. And we will also share a template for working group reports uh, before 7 June at the end of this week. So hopefully, uh, it's an experiment. Um, like all of this is an experiment, we we'll hope that this can work, and um, with some uh, some goodwill and I think also appropriate technology, I think we can achieve quite a lot in this incessant work group that you establish. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretary, for for these uh, explanations, which are certainly helpful and make everyone aware how we will conduct our work in, in this big experiment in the in the next weeks. Okay.
So with this, we can move on to the next agenda item, which is agenda item 18, uh, defini definition of the term appropriate and acceptable. Concerning this agenda item, I would like to bring the committee's attention to document AC31 doc 18.1, which was written by the Secretariat and two addenda, the first of which was also written by the Secretariat and the second of which was written by the co-chairs of the AC Intercessional Working Group on Appropriate and Acceptable Destinations. The document and addendum one provide updates on progress on the implementation of decisions 18.152 and 18.154 and draws attention to the CITES web page on appropriate and acceptable destinations and responses to the notification to the parties number 2019-070 in Annex 2 of the document. Addendum 1 provides information on the implementation of decision 18153 that is presented in Annex 3. I would like to start by recalling that decision 18153 instructs the Secretariat to provide the information received following consultation with parties whose elephants are listed in Appendix 2 and who have exported wild-caught elephants to a non-elephant range state since COP11 on their implementation of resolution CONF 1120 on definition of the term appropriate and acceptable destinations. In particular, considering the role and responsibility of the state of export in Article 4 and Resolution Conf 16.7 Ref COP 17 on non-detriment findings to the Annuals Committee for its consideration. In this regard, I would draw your attention to paragraph 7 to 9 of Addendum 1 to document AC 31 Doc 18.1 and Annex 3, which includes an NDF received in response from Zimbabwe. Next, I would like to recall the mandate of the Animals Committee in this regard by reminding everyone of the text of decision 18155, which is directed to the Animals Committee. It reads, the Animals Committee shall prepare non-binding best practice guidance on how to determine whether the trade would promote in situ conservation in line with the provisions of paragraph 2b of resolution conf 1120 ref cop 18 in consultation with the secretariat b Building on the existing non-binding guidance contained in document COP18 doc 44.1, prepare more detailed species-specific guidance for living specimens of African elephants and southern white rhinos in consultation with the relevant experts, including species and zoological facility expert and the secretariat and C, make the guidance and any recommendations available for consideration and endorsement by the standing committee. And D, review the report from the Secretariat on feedback from parties called for in decision 18152, paragraph D, and make recommendations as appropriate for consideration by the standing committee. So you see, it's, it's quite a complex uh, matter, many, many different issues to look at. Concerning the last part of this mandate, so mandate B of decision 181452, I note that the Secretariat points out in addendum 1 that there was no sufficient time for parties to have used the guidance and the material on the web page to be able to provide feedback on their experiences. So And so it is proposed to issue a notification seeking feedback after COP19. To this end, I draw your attention to the set of draft decisions that is proposed in paragraph 5 of Addendum 1. Concerning the rest of the mandate of decision 118.155, you will recall that through intercessional decision-making, the committee established an intercessional working group on, on the definition of the term appropriate and acceptable destinations with the following mandate. Prepare non-binding draft 
pre prepared draft, non-binding best guidance, best practice guidance on how to determine whether the trade would promote in situ conservation in line with the provisions of paragraph 2b of resolution conf 1120 ref cop 18 in consultation with the secretariat and building on the existing non-binding guidance contained in document cop 18 doc 44.1 prepare more detailed species specific guidance for living specimens of African elephants and southern white rhinos in consultation with relevant experts including species and zoological facility expert and the secretariat and report on the outcomes to the, to the animals committee. The report of, from the two co-chairs of the working group is contained in the addendum 2. I would like now first to, to explain how we went about our work and where we are now and would also ask uh, my co-chair to, 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 uh, to give her uh, um, explanations on the part that was under her guidance. So uh, we first split the two issues in two sets of, in, in, in two working streams. One prepared that draft non-binding best practice guidance and the second on, uh, on the um, preparing more detailed species specific guidance for living specimens of these two spe species. Uh, concerning uh, that mandate A, we looked in, in the convention where there is in a resolution mention of, of such uh, best practice guidance on how to, to determine whether trade would promote in situ conservation. And we found a uh, resolution, third, oh, I don't remember the number, 13, uh, 13 point, I don't, I, I, I can't spell it out right now. <laughs> I can't read that, but it's okay. We, we we found that where where it is it is it is considering it is thirteen point nine. I've I've got the message uh, where it is it is considered in in the in 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 relation to appendix one species. What parties should consider when when making that assessment? So based on on these con considerations in the resolution thirteen point nine, we first set up a list of possible benefits for uh, for the con for in situ conservation and and in the, in the second part we then said well now if we have such a list of of um, of best uh, guidance non binding guidance to 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 see uh, to see what benefits can be achieved, then how do scientific authorities in, in general, if they make that assessment, look at it? And that was that was our work. We have we have finished more or less that list of possible benefits, and in we have now been discussing ways uh, forward how uh, parties and uh, scientific authorities can use that list for making that assessment of um, of how trade could, could promote in situ con con conservation. We haven't finished the work, so we foresee to have a working group that that will consider that issue furthermore. So for the mandate B, I would pass the floor to my co-chair uh, from Europe, uh, Dagmar Sikova. Dagmar, you have the floor. Yes, now, hello, thank you very much, Matthias. Indeed, on, on the working stream B, uh, the group uh, had very good discussion. Uh, it was built on the responses by parties and also on the current uh, guidelines as, uh, on, on keeping elephants and rhinos in uh, as, as contained in document COP18, uh, document 44.1. Uh, which contains a certain set of uh, factors to be considered. So these factors have been further developed into a comprehensive list of, of factors that need to be uh, 
uh, assessed uh, to uh, to uh, consider whether facility keeping uh, uh, elephants or rhinos is suitably equipped to house and and care for them. Uh, there was a general agreement in the working group on the list of factors as contained now in addendum two of of the document, but still there were differing views among the working group members on two questions. So the the first issue was whether or not specific minimum values should be developed for either all of these factors or at least for those most important ones. Uh, for example, uh, the enclosure size or the composition of the social group. And then the second question was whether uh, two separate sets of guidance uh, are needed for elephants and rhinos. So the, the group continued discussing these questions uh, up to the meeting. And there seems to be agreement in the group that uh, uh, concerning the factors, uh, there is no need for two lists separately for elephants and rhinos, as, uh, as the, the list is general enough to provide good basis for the two species. But of course, if there would be then specific values, then it would lead to different values for elephants and for rhinos. Regarding the specific values, uh, a number of uh, working group members argued against developing specific uh, specific values. They point, pointed out uh, to the variety of existing guidance documents, which provide already a significant level of detail, uh, including recommended specific values. It was also stressed out that uh, such an exercise would be time and resource intensive, and and uh, any such uh, guidance would need regular updates to, to, to be kept up to the latest information the, yeah, and knowledge. Uh, there were, however, also also parties, uh, sorry, it was not parties, it was observer members of the working group. Uh, a number of uh, organizations expressed their opinion that no exit to captive facility has currently the space and design to meet the social and behavioral needs of wild caught elephants. So there is obviously a disagreement in the group and uh, we will need to continue the discussion in the in-session uh, setup. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Europe, Dagmar. So what, what, uh, what I would now propose is uh, I would invite comments on the following. A, the information received following consultations with parties whose elephants are listed in Appendix 2 found in paragraph 7 to 9 of Addendum 1 and Annex 3. The draft decisions presented in paragraph 5 of Addendum 1. The possible forms of benefits for in situ conservation found in Annex, of addend annex 1 of Addendum 2 and species-specific guidance for living specimens of African elephants and southern white rhinos found in Annex 2 of Addendum 2. Keep in mind that we will um, have an in-session working group who will consider these is issues further, uh, so please keep keep it short. You will have time to discuss, to give your views as well in the working group that will be formed. So I open the floor for uh, members of the Animals Committee. I don't see anybody from the Animals Committee asking for the floor, so no comments from from the the members. Then I would open the floor for observer parties, and I see Gabon has asked for the floor. Gabon, you have the floor. Greetings. In fact, we asked for the floor earlier on pangolins, 
We had not requested the floor on this item. Sorry, sir. Oh, ouais. Merci beaucoup. D'accord. So I, I think Gabon can also be included included in 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 the working group uh, the, in the nomenclature working group. I think uh, I, I was foreseeing that if we put this in the working group, there may be additional parties as asking for uh, to be part. So yes. So I see Germany. Germany, you have the floor. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, we would like to thank uh, the International Working Group on Appropriate and Acceptable Destinations as well as the Secretariat for the work on this important matter. And we have uh, just a general question or comment regarding the best practice guidance on how to determine whether trade would promote in situ conservation. Um, and we would like to seek confirmation uh, if we understand it correctly, that the potential benefits that have been listed by the working group are not meant to be um, automatically interpreted as an except, exceptional circumstance, according to Resolution Con 11.20, but instead are intended to aid uh, the relevant scientific authorities in consultation with the AC through its chair, with support by the Secretariat, and in consultation with the IUCN Elephant Specialist Group um, to evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis whether trade con uh, contributes demonstrably to the long-term in situ conservation of the species because at present the list contains uh, potential benefits for conservation which are of general nature and not specifically formulated for African elephants less or yet so, um, yeah, the guidance document sh should be developed a bit further in a way elaborating that the presence of potential benefits alone does not justify trade in wild elephants. So that trade in wild elephants should still only take place exceptionally uh, after careful assessment. And um, as this does not become evident from the draft document yet, uh, we propose including a respective uh, paragraph in the final um, document of the working group. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. Yes, it, it is. It is un understood that that this list is a should be a help whenever, in a case by case basis, a scientific authority is asked to 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 evaluate wh whether it promotes in situ conservation any trade, and uh, it, it's as as is written in paragraph two B. It is it is considered. There it talks about the general issue if a species is in Appendix 2 with such an annotation. So it doesn't specifically address elephants and, and rhinos in this paragraph. And so the list is a, is a general list which must be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. And it may help make a, a decision uh, to a scientific authority whether whether such a, a, a trade should be allowed under these circumstances. We have asked whether the group should also con consider paragraph 2a. And there, I mean, the mandate that we were given by the COP is, is clear. It's only considering a paragraph 2b that the working group has to look at, and that's what the working group did. So we, we did not specifically address the issue on, on what has to be done on the paragraph 2a. That for clarification. Uh, any other observer party who would want to take the floor? I don't see any observer party, so uh, observer organization, please, if you want to take the floor. I see uh, David Shepard, Wildlife Foundation. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. We're making this intervention on behalf of 10 NGO observer organizations and have posted uh, their names in full in the chat. 
While we appreciate the intersessional working group's efforts, we are deeply concerned that it has strayed from its mandate to prepare guidance on how to determine whether the trade would promote in situ conservation benefits. The generic list of presumed benefits fails to take into account paragraph one of resolution COMP 1120 Rev COP 18, which establishes a strong presumption against the ex situ trade in live elephants in Appendix 2 populations. In our view, this excludes elephants from any generic guidance on in situ benefits. Moreover, the working group mandate does not extend to defining the exceptional circumstances under which ex situ trade may occur. We urge the co-chairs and the secretariat to ensure the guidance complies with resolution Comp, 20, uh, Comp 1120 Rev Cop 18. Documents 18.1 and 18.2 demonstrate the parties have exported or have pl plans to continue trading in wild caught African elephants, despite the amendment of Resolution Conf 1120 as agreed at COP 18. Uh, document uh, 18.1, Addendum 1, further reports actions by parties that left unchecked could seriously undermine CITES. We are particularly concerned about the potential precedent set by um, allowing parties to lodge so-called reservations to resolutions. The Secretariat should make it clear that these are unacceptable since reservations only apply to amendments uh, to the appendices and not to the resolutions themselves. We also call into question Namibia's trading of Appendix 2 elephants as Appendix 1 specimens in order to avoid the limitation in the annotation that restricts exports to in situ programmes. We urge the committee to refer these issues to the Standing Committee to consider whether they comply with the Convention. Lastly, we support the establishment of the in-session working group and recommend revision to the mandate to include document uh, 18.2. Now more than ever, as we struggle to contain the pandemic, the trade in wild-caught live animals is under the world spotlight. Surely it is our collective interest for CITES to strengthen its implementation rather than weaken it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David Shepard, Wildlife Foundation. Uh, I now open the floor for EASA. EASA, you have the floor. Do you have to turn on your mic? You are muted still. Your microphone is not turned on yet. Okay, I think w while maybe the Ben from Kudo can, can liaise with EASA to see if they can solve the problem, I would like in that case give the floor to conservation al analytics. Conservation analytics, you have the floor while we try to so solve the technical problem. Yes, we can hear you now. Hello. Okay, great. Um, thank you for the floor, Chair. Uh, as was raised at COP16 in Africa, there continues to be implementation issues that have not been addressed, um, as we just heard. Um, we've currently created a situation where export requirements for Appendix 2 species are stricter than those for Appendix 1. This is contrary to Article 2, Fundamental Principle 1 of the Convention, which states that Appendix 1 species must be subject to a particularly strict regulation and they must only be authorised in exceptional circumstances. The decisions from last COP allow Animals Committee to refer issues highlighted during discussions to the Standing Committee for their consideration. This was raised at every AC meeting um, intercessionally last time, but is yet to be properly considered by the Standing Committee Working Group and still continues to be raised during our discussions. Um, I therefore recommend that this and a number of other implementation and legal issues should be referred to the Standing Committee for their consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Conservation Analytics. 
has been noted. So do I see anybody else asking for the floor? Could we solve the problem we had with EASA? Yes, EASA, you have the floor. Yes, now we don't even see EASA. So I think we still have these technical issues. So I would then in that case hope that they can continue in, in solving these problems. I, and I would give the floor to Sudan, who has asked for the floor. Sudan, you have the floor. Well, again, it, it seems that we do have some technical problems. Okay, uh, I see Aza has asked for the floor, so I would give the floor to Aza. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, and I will try to help my um, colleague from the European Association of Zoos and Aquariums. This intervention is made on behalf of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, the European Association of Zoos and Aquariums, the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums, Wildlife Conservation Society, Zoological Society of London, and the International Elephant Foundation. As members of the Intercessional Working Group, we'd like to congratulate you and your co-chair for the effective leadership and excellent progress made on both items under the working group's mandate. In relation to the best practice guidance on how to determine whether the trade would promote in situ conservation, we value the cautious approach not to impose stricter measures on Appendix 2 species than already exist for Appendix 1 species. We support the possible forms of benefits for in situ conservation outlined in Annex 1 of Document 18.1, Addendum 2. We strongly agree that any of the listed benefits should aim to secure long-term populations of species and natural ecosystems and habitats. And we believe that the working group needs to continue its work in order to complete the guidance to parties on the use and application of the items listed in Annex 1 to obtain further examples of best practice and to conclude whether or not to also provide guidance on paragraph 1. In relation to the species-specific guidance for li living specimens of African elephants and southern white rhinos, we support the approach and the species-specific guidance as provided in Annex 2 of Document 18.1, Addendum 2. We do not support developing minimum values for some or all items included in the guidance, given that any such values will have to consider an enormous variety of circumstances and scenarios across CITES parties and are therefore incredibly complex if not impossible, to get consensus on. And we see a risk that the good progress on developing the guidance will get stalled. It will require significant resources to develop and maintain these values, also considering that similar needs for guidance might arise for other species in alignment with any precedent that we set here. And finally, and most importantly, existing high quality guidelines, including such values as provided by professional zoo associations is already available to parties for this purpose. In conclusion, we therefore propose that the working group has completed this part of its mandate. Finally, Chair, our organizations are, remain committed to contribute to the important work of this working group. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Aza. So we have the, I think I have a pretty good overview um, and I would therefore uh, propose the following. 
I haven't heard any concerns uh, on the draft decisions in paragraph 5 of addendum 1 for consideration of the standing committee. So I would propose that the, uh, as does the animals committee agrees to propose this draft decision to standing committee at its 74th meeting. And I would like to establish a working group with the following mandate. Concerning decision 18153, consider the scientific aspects of the responses in paragraph 7 to 9 of addendum 1 to document AC 31 doc 18.1 and in annex 3 and draft recommendations for the animals considerations as appropriate. And B, concerning decisions 18155, review annexes 1 and 2 of addendum 2 to document AC 31 doc 18.1 and any update updates provided to the, to the meeting by the co-chairs of the working group and draft recommendations as appropriate for the animal committee's consideration. So that's the mandate I propose for this working group. And uh, with this, I see the uh, representative from Europe has asked for the floor. So Dagmar, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Matthias. Just uh, one comment regarding the draft decision 19 AA as contained in paragraph uh, five. Uh, it refers to the uh, to the non-binding guidance for determining whether a proposed recipient of a living specimen is suitably equipped to house and care for, for it, uh, as contained in notification 2019-070. Uh, that uh, document uh, refers to the previous version of the guidance, but if uh, now this uh, advanced developed guidance would be uh, adopted by the Animals Committee and Standing Committee, then parties might also have uh, experience with uh, implementing this up, uh, updated or, or new guidance. So maybe we could leave this paragraph open to see where we end up after the in-session working group and possibly add reference to the new version if that okay. is agreed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If, even though, if if it is adopted at AC and, and SC forwards it to to the to the COP, then they will have problems in using it to implement their their things in the next one two years. But uh, I think we 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 can add it if they can use that advanced guidance as well. So yes. So uh, I haven't heard any. But the opposing the mandate of the working group, so I would form that working group and first ask ask members of the the committee whether they want to join. Uh, first, members of the animals committee. Asia, uh, Europe, of course. Uh, uh, Central, South, and, and America and the Caribbean. These are members, okay. Then uh, observer parties, I see Botswana, United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Switzerland, Argentina, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Japan, China, Namibia, any other parties front? Netherlands, Then, uh, then I will turn to observers, uh, observer organizations. Can you please clean out all the parties? Uh, I see Gabon has also has also voiced interest before it was uh, cleaned out. Sp 
Spain also, and now I have observer organizations born free. Uh, can we shortly make a account secretariat? Uh, on 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 the uh, members and uh, yeah. observer parties. I understand. Yes, there are eighteen. Okay, so for the moment we have twenty-two uh, observer organizations who are asking for the floor. That's four above uh, what we have from parties. So, uh, if there are organizations who who could put themselves together to be represented. Uh, at the moment we have 20, so maybe two more who may, 19, one more, and then we have 18 to 18, and that, that would be acceptable. So now, very good. Now I have 18 uh, observer organizations, and I read them out. Born Free Foundation, IUCN, WWF, Conservation Analytics, EASA, WCS, IEF, David Shepard Wildlife Foundation, ASA, German Society of Herpetology, Humane Society International, AWI, San Diego Zoo Wildlife, IFO, International Association for Wildlife, Fondation Franz Weber, Pro Wildlife Set SL. Okay, so these are the members of that working group, and you will be informed where and when we will meet uh, during this week. Now I move on to agenda item 18.2. Maybe um, a short a short note concerning membership to working groups i've been advised by the secretariat that there have been some participants who had technical problems to join working groups to to make that themselves known as members so for the working groups we have now struck we may be able to see tomorrow morning whether we can add some more members uh depending uh to to see if if parties who have had problems joining if they can join then on on tomorrow morning so we will look at that at not tomorrow morning tomorrow noon for some it will be morning so tomorrow noon okay at the start of the session so let's move on to 18.2 international trade in live african elephants this is document ac31 doc 18.2 it has been submitted by burkina faso and Niger, and I would ask one of the two to introduce the document. I don't see anybody asking for the floor. They may not be, they may not have joined. Uh, so uh, nobody here to in introduce it. It is a document that provides information on exports from four parties involved in trade in live ele African elephants since 2010. And uh, I do think what I would ask the animals committee to consider the information presented in that document in the context of decision 18.153 and 18.155 and uh, give their views what we do with this document, what what we can, if, if we can in, introduce it, uh, include it in the, the deliberations of the working group, or if we could ask the parties to submit the document to the standing committee for its consideration. So we have to, to decide what we do with this document. So I open the floor for comments from the members of the committee. I don't see any members asking for, for the floor, so I would open the floor for observer parties. 
uh, the uh, I see the United States has asked for the floor, so the United States, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The United States supports considering the information presented by Burkina Faso and Niger in this document, and as you suggested, would prefer this information be considered by the Animals Committee in session working group. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you, United States. That's clear. Uh, so I see uh, uh, the representative from Africa, uh, Apollinaire Menza, you have the floor. The microphone is muted, so we cannot hear you. So it, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, just a short notice, we have been reminded all to speak slower Sometimes uh, wanting to advance uh, tempts me to speak too fast, so I will try to speak slower and I will also ask the participants to, to slow down. So I see Botswana. Botswana, you have the floor. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, Chair. I was battling with connectivity here. Now it works. I hear you. Thank you. Um, g given the, the um, reference to, to um, 11.20, um, Botswana just wanted to um, state here that we've made a reservation on the resolution um, 11.20. Um, at, at COP20, COP18, uh, but the Secretariat has never acknowledged receipt of the reservation. Um, so Botswana still awaits a uh, response from the Secretariat that would then allow us to uh, form, form an opinion. And we believe as an important elephant ranch state that uh, um, the way this resolution was, was changed, it needs to be looked at. Um, and so that's why I would appreciate um, for the Secretariat to revert on Botswana's reservation so that we uh, can chat the way forward. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Botswana. So uh, I think that is a question directly directly to the Secretary. I will take one, a couple of more interventions and then revert back to the Secretary. So UK, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, we think that uh, Niger and Burkina Faso have raised a number of valid points. It appears that there might be some lessons that could be learnt from the past trade um, in order to improve the consequences and mortality rates in the future. Uh, we agree with the United States that perhaps this document could be discussed in the in-session working group alongside the other country responses. Thank you. Thank you, UK. I see China. Thank you, Chair. China is sure that uh, live trade data pre presented in this document is exaggerated and incorrect. After double checking the facts, the principle and the spirit of CITES should be safeguarded with universal acceptance rather than be misinterpreted. Misinter we concur with that it is through implementation 
that we can make sure the tools and the applicable mechanism of CITES remain useful. China wants to draw attention to Annex 3 of Document 18.1, which is submitted by Zimbabwe. The voice of range states as a, stake, as a stakeholder clearly states several major considerations of live elephant trade, the NDF with best available science, the due diligence through field, field visits, and the benefits for in-situ conservation, which represents complete compliance with existing existing regulation of the Convention by both exporting and importing countries. China reiterates the preamble of CITES that people and the states are and should be the best protectors of their own wild fauna and flora, which become especially true in the context of COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 promoted by the UN. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, China, for this comment. Uh, I would now turn to Nigeria. Nigeria, you have the floor. Hello, Mr. Chair. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I want to go in line with uh, the US and the UK, you know, on uh, the uh, this document, and to also uh, talk about the uh, the submission made by Burkina Faso and Niger, and also request that the working uh, group that will be formed in session you know, uh, take into uh, consideration the information that is provided uh, in document 18.2 as submitted by Burkina Faso. Okay. So I therefore uh, agreed with the UK and the US. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nigeria. Now I come to the point where I have to admit this discretion close to the speaker list and move on move on to, to to a conclusion and I propose as has been suggested by different parties that the information contained in document 18.2 be included in the deliberations on on uh, on a, on uh, definition of the term appropriate and acceptable designation and that would then read, Paragraph A of the mandate of this working group would then read concerning decision 18153, consider the scientific aspects of the responses in paragraph 7 to 9 of addendum 1 to document AC 31, doc 18.1, comma, document AC 31, doc 18.2, and in annex 3, and so on. So this, we would then add this document to be considered by by the working group as well so that's my proposed way forward if i don't see anybody disagreeing uh, on this then i would close this item and we would move on like that so the next item to look at is document ac31 doc 20 on west west african vultures let me see where my document is. As directed in decision 18190, the Animals Committee established an intercessional working group on West African vultures through intercessional decision making. Addendum 1 is the report of this working group with its findings and recommendations for consideration by the Animals Committee. The Addendum 2 by the Secretariat presents revised recommendations for consideration by the Animals Committee in Australia with reference to draft decisions in the UNEP WCMC study West African Vultures, a review of trade and sentinel poisoning, which was also shared with the working group. 
Uh, I would like to invite the, the co-chair Ashkar Mubaraki of the Vultures Working Group to briefly present its report. But I think he is he uh, if he has joined, then please ask for the floor. So I have otherwise I will have to take the document up. Yes, he is here. Very good. So uh, Africa, um, Asia, you have the floor, Ashkar, please. Can you hear me? Yes, very good. Yeah. I can hear you. Of course, I hope that uh, all you are fine and thank you for the preparing the meeting. Just based on the decisions, uh, I will try to be very concise and because I think we have time to take. Based on the decisions of 18.86 and 18.192 on West African vultures and regarding the decisions 80.190 directed to Animal Committee Intersessional Working group was established to analyze and address gaps in the watch multi-species action plan <clears throat> with particular attention to six species of Egyptian hooded white-backed white uh, white um, leopard face and opus vultures. Regarding to decision 18.188, all parties have been requested to uh, to to do information on trade and to send information on the trade and conservation, including biological data, trade, treats, enforcement, harvest, and management options of above mentioned six species of the vultures. Following the decision 18.186 to 189 to the Secretariat, the Secretariat has contracted UNEPCM, WCMC to collate and analyze received information on the conservation and the trade in watchers. The uh, WCMC report in um, 2021 titled Best African Watchers a Review of Trade and Sentinel Poisoning was received in March and provided to the uh, working, uh, working group of the Animal Committee, which circulated it to the members of the working group for their recommendation and suggestion. The responses received from the members, especially from the U.S., Spain, Human Society, SSN, Animal Welfare, Institute of BirdLife International, Born Free, <coughs> USA, USA, Sahara Conservation Fund, and the traffic were reviewed and based on the reports um, of the WCMC report and responses of the members of the working group relevant, relevant finding and recommendations were provided to the uh, uh, animal committee. Uh, the report of this WCMS provided seven decisions, 19AA to 19GG, as shown in the annex to document 20 at Two, including decisions directed to animal committee to consider and submit report and analyzes and review the results based on the on these decisions. That um, some revised recommendations directed to animal committee two prepared by the uh, secretariat, as stated in the addendum two to the document twenty. It was a very short report of the what we prepared and we did in the. Uh, our working groups. I just would like to thank the helps of the other vice chairs for the groups and the um, head of the standing committee and the secretariat for preparing the report. Thank you. Thank you, Asia Ashkar, for your report. So, um, I would like to remind you that we are instructed in this decision 18191 to make recommendations on non-detriment findings for range states and furthermore to make recommendations to the standing committee for further submission to COP19. Based on the documents in front of us, uh, I would like to suggest the following uh, way forward. First, I would like to invite the Animals Committee to note document AC 31 doc 20 and its addendums. Second, I would like us to consider whether decision 18190 has been implemented. The, the working group on vultures was established by the Animals Committee and its findings and recommendations provided. So we have basically done that work. Thirdly, regarding the NDFs, 
the committee could ask the Secretariat to inform the range states of West African vultures that improved NDF guidance is expected to be developed as we will discuss later uh, on this meeting, and to share relevant NDF materials with the range states whenever it comes becomes available. So that would be asking the secretary to do that. And uh, be, before before I go on, I would like to, to put these three points to to your uh, for your consideration and ask you if you have any comments or su suggestions uh, saying that if, if, if I hear silence on these three issues then we can uh, adopt them and move forward. Uh, members of the Animals Committee, I don't see any uh, anybody asking for the floor. Uh, observer parties, On this matter, nobody asks for the floor. I have then Humane Society. And uh, yes, Humane Society, you have the floor. The microphone is muted. Oh, Lord. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Yes, now I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm making this uh, intervention also on behalf of uh, Species Survival Network. Uh, we'd like to point out that of the six focal species addressed in this report, and uh, we certainly agree with the recommendations of the working group on this issue, uh, we note that four of them are classified by IUCN as critically endangered and two as endangered. And so given the status of these species, we, we recommend that range states be encouraged to adopt zero export quotas for wild specimens of these species, except for specimens of scientific purposes or, or for reintroduction uh, or introduction to the wild, because currently there is trade in trophies, bodies, and live specimens for both personal, commercial, and uh, for hunting purposes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, HSI. Uh well, just just to be clear, we do not talk now about recommendations to the standing committee. Not yet. Uh, this this is not. I wanted to to clear the first three uh, parts of, of of our discussion mainly uh, that we take note of the document that we consider that decision eighteen one ninety has been completed, and concerning NDFs that that the committee asked the se secretary to provide the information to the parties whenever they become available. So this is what we are right now looking at. The other part I will come to. So uh, CMS, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, I may be too early for that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> then, then I will come come back to you later. Okay. So it seems that all these these three parts that they, they they can be uh, adopted by by the animals committee. And now we come to to the uh, regarding the recommendations to the standing committee. So we have those of the working group to con consider as they have been just presented by uh, Asian representative um, from Iran. And the draft decision extracted from the Vulture study as shown in, the, in addendum two. These two sets are, in my view, valuable and complementary, but not all suggestions may fall under CITES competencies if, if we look at them one by one. And they could benefit from further, further revision and alignment. I would therefore propose to set up an in-session working group on vultures with the mandate to A, comment and review the draft recommendations in addendum one from the working group and review the draft decision in the annex of addendum two and report its findings for consideration by the animals committee later this meeting. So that's what I propose concerning the recommendations and decisions. I'm, I'm mindful that it may be 
difficult in, in the setting to, to complete that mandate or merging the two sets of recommendations in, in, in one, uh, in one uh, thing. So um, if, I would also suggest that if needed, the chair of the animals committee through its uh, and the, or the animals committee through its chair and the co-chairs of the working group be instructed to finalize these recommendations on vultures in collaboration with the secretariat for submission to SC74. So to to have a, a way out if we don't quite finish what what, what we what we uh, want to accomplish in that working group. So now I open the floor for for comments on my proposed way forward, noting that we don't. Have have that much time left for today so please uh, be concise and clear I hear I see uh, North America has asked for the floor to be brief we agree with your proposed way forward but in particular we would like to highlight that uh, some recommendations including paragraph 6 go beyond the scope of CITES. So we need to be very clear in that in that point. Um, and uh, yes, just to be brief. Thank you. Thank you, North America. Any other members of the Animals Committee making a suggestion or comment on the way forward? I don't see anybody asking for the floor, so I would move on to observer parties. So, observer parties. <laughs> okay, so I think we have we have brought an agreement that this is the way forward and the mandate I have read out. Uh, comment and review the draft recommendations in Addendum 1, review the draft decision in Annex of Addendum 2, and report back to the Animals Committee. So I would like to strike that working group in the minutes that, that we have left. I would ask for uh, participation by AC members, Animals Committee members, who wants to be part of that working group? I suppose the Two co-leads, yes, the two co-leads, uh, uh, Asia and Africa. I think uh, Galie would also be, be part of that working group. Then any other member of the Animals Committee? I don't see anybody. So uh, I would open the floor for interests from observer parties. United States. UK, Switzerland, any other parties? It, it might be in, important also, uh, Spain, that range countries from, from these West African vultures would also form part of that working group. It's, it's their species. So if, if West African parties present would Join the working group that would be quite helpful, I think. I don't see anybody showing interest, so okay. So we have in total, Secretary, t uh, I did, you know, when I have it, okay, six. Okay, so now I would like to open the floor for, uh, for, uh, observer organizations i have c oh can you please clean out all all the parties first so it makes eight and we have six so uh, it's even nine so i i would suggest that cms is only represented by by one person i think that would be that would be all right so we have eight that's still too 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 many Make seven, one more who, who, who could liaise with a, another organization to make sure that their voice is heard. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now, uh, <laughs> it's, ev it's even too much now. <laughs> okay, good. So, <laughs> 
Okay, very good. So we have CMS, Humane Society International, IUCN, UNEP WCMC, Traffic and Animal Welfare Institute. So we have the membership of that working group. With this, we have we are on point half four. I would like to ask the secretariat if you have any any information, housekeeping uh, information to give, secretariat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, not to prolong this, I just wanted to repeat what you just announced. Uh, for some working groups, there seem to have been difficulties, technical difficulties amongst parties to join. Please put in the chat box when you try to join a working group where you, and that you were unable to join. Put it in the chat box and make clear which working group you tried to join and were unable to. I believe that the, that the issue mainly concerned the, the working group on nomenclature, particularly when it became clear that also pangolins would be part of its mandate. But there may have been other working groups where this was the case. So please make it clear in the chat box that we can verify. And as you mentioned, Mr. Chair, we will actually then announce the, the correct uh, participation or membership uh, tomorrow, but without taking time, if at all possible. Thank you. Okay. And please, everybody, speak slowly. That has been uh, an, an issue actually uh, during the three hours. But uh, as you said, Mr. Chair, that's, that's difficult to control, but let's try again tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much. So with with this, I would close today's session. I see somebody has now has asked for the floor. Is 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 it still a, 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 an urgent matter, CMS? No, it isn't. Okay, so I would close today's session. Thank you for your collaboration, and uh, we see each other tomorrow at the same time. So thank you very much.